This tutorial was brought to you thanks to the supporters on the screen. Check out tapjiles.com to find more Dreams resources, donate to support my work, or engage my services to get private instruction or help on a project one on one. Uh, next thing is this the run and walk animation blending demo. So let's look at that. Cool. So this is the walk part of it, and then when you um, the more you pull R2, it goes into running mode. So now he's running and his like head's down and it's got more of a flailing animation and it's moving a lot faster. But then as you let go of R2, he just smoothly animates to walking. And I didn't use a puppet with like a humanoid run and walk cycle because I don't actually know how to animate very well. <laughs> So this is what you get in. This stuff like syncs up perfectly and um but you can add other things like head bobbing and things like that. Okay, so I'll just show you how this rig is set up. All we have is a spider robot thing with one leg uh so that it's quicker for me to animate and we have this kind of um hovering red thing that might like flash if this is like a security robot or something like that, you know. So um, now let's animate it. First we'll do the walking cycle. So I'll click on this to give us uh, beats mode, which uh, will make this generally a lot easier to do. And then I'll animate it. So first I'll, I'll place it where it, it should be on the ground. And then move it all the way back over here. So this is going to be the walk, so it's going to have quite a small, short stride. And we'll animate that like that. And then it's going to like lift this leg up a little bit to move it forward. And put it down over here. And I'll get, grab that first keyframe that's on the ground again and link these up so I can compare where it is so it'll do this natural curve for us but we want the when it moves along the ground instead of it being um, like a curve like that as well you want it to just to just be straight so if we find the one so it's that one and we'll tweak it and turn off smoothing and now that part just has a straight line so if I just do that and make it loop so I'm going to turn off um, collidable. Okay, so it's kind of slow, but don't worry, none of the timing of how long it takes to loop um, will be controlling that separately, don't worry. So uh, we want ideally these things to kind of line up perfectly on these numbers or something. So um, that's down at the front and then that's down at the back. And then if you use L1 and right and left, you kind of go between these using on the DS4. That's when it comes up and it's about to go down. So we'll have these kind of evenly spaced, I think. So we have two bars of this animation and that's the whole loop. So this is like the ground is moving past. So the leg is staying at the same position is the idea. And then it's lifting its leg to stick to the ground again and back. So now let's do the running animation by just copying that and tweaking how this uh, works. To make sure it's not interfering, we're going to turn off the old timeline. Nice. First, let's get these blending together. So we want some value, which will probably come from like uh, the speed the, uh, the um, robot is moving or something like that. So we'll have the walk powered normally, but then as this goes up, it's like it's running. So then we'll power this one off and power that one up with a keyframe. So we'll just turn this one on, turn this one off. Now as I power it using this uh, value slider, it's actually, as you can tell by the glow, it's actually um, becoming more and more powered and so it means this is becoming more powered um, as this goes up and this is becoming less powered as this goes up 
and um, it also means these animations have less effect as they get powered down and more effect as they get powered up. So if we just test that now, let's play that. And now if I turn this up, we've got the run animation. If I turn it down, I've got the walk animation. So now I'll use another timeline to control these timelines. This has an output of playhead position, which gives you a percentage of how far through it's played through. And if we open the timeline and then grab a wire, we can plug in a percentage into here, which has a similar effect, but it sets the playhead position. So we can actually go from one timeline into the playhead of another. And now this controls the timing of that that uh, timeline completely. So if you make it shorter, um, and currently it's not looping, so it won't. This won't loop either. But we could put it onto loop mode, and now it'll loop like that. And we could make it faster or slower. And if we made it shorter, it would go through this whole thing faster and slower as well. So we're going to use this as kind of a proxy timeline that will affect both of these. And we're going to use that so that while we're walking, it's kind of slower. So we'll set it for how fast the walk should be. So something like that. And then on this same keyframe, which is representing what it will be when we're on full run mode, we can up the speed. If we play time, we can preview it. And this will be the running speed animation speed thing. So now both the blending and the speed of the animation is controlled by this, but they're, but they're kind of in sync. They're in sync because of this, because they're the, the timings within the uh, animations themselves are the same. So it's always going to be down at the front there and then down at the back there and then lifting up and so on at the same points and we are controlling the timing of both of those and how they blend together using this value slider. So now we're back to walking and now we're back to running and it always matches up. It never kind of glitches out or something. So um, let's add something else for this head. This is in walk mode. So I'll just have, have it kind of bobbing side to side lazily. When you're working with keyframes on the timeline, they're always they start off as being a single frame wide, which you can't even see in this uh, resolution. Um, but that means you can kind of snap to like slightly different positions. You want to try and snap onto the uh, the bars like that. And now we play to see how it looks. That's okay. So I'm going to make it kind of um, glow on these bits as well. So and now it's got a kind of jolly little walking along thing and now we'll go on to the running mode and add a similar thing but it'll be kind of more aggressive and ready for action so it'll have its head down there like that so now we've got a kind of more focused mode like that and we can blend between those as well and again because we timed them out the same in both of these timelines it all just works and we'll add a keyframe to just make it glow all the time because it's now it's serious which also means because it's in there this kind of pulsing thing will only happen there and then as you even go here you kind of can't see that pulsing happening happening anymore so what you might want to do is say if it's actually going at full tilt then it's got full glow going on otherwise it's got just the on and off timing thing so what we're going to do for that is copy the walk and have it not be affected by um, this keyframe but we'll still have the same timing and we'll remove the uh, walking stuff and here we'll remove the uh, we'll just remove the glow actually and then in here we're going to just make it glow so let's just remove all those. Yeah, so this one will have some glow. This one will have some glow. And now we've got it pulsa pulsating just like before. But now I'll also bring this out here. And we're going to make it um, have that pulsing glow all the time, apart from when you're going full tilt. 
by using another timeline from this same uh, value over here. So we're going to control the playhead again. And what a timeline basically does is just turn gadgets on and off depending on um, if the playhead is over it or not. So we can actually put this keyframe in here and then if we're right there now we're constantly glowing. If we're down here then we're not constantly glowing and we can see that pulse again. But what we can do is um, have this timeline be off so it normally doesn't glow at all and use another keyframe to turn this on during these parts down here. Like that. I'll just overlap them a bit like that. So while we're walking, we're just glowing. We're, we're pulsing the glow. And we can easily adjust these to whatever ranges we want. So now, uh, during this whole thing, even when it's gathering speed, it's still pulsing. But then when it gets to the top, now it's got full glow and that's all it's worried about. It's just going to glow. So you can use this same kind of speed uh, controlling another timeline to add in whole new animations that aren't necessarily um, tied to that, or maybe they are, or maybe it um, shows some extra stuff on the side. Maybe it's got some go faster stripes. Let's just add those. And those only show uh, during this part. So we can have them uh, very low opacity and then a high opacity so if we go down here they're like barely visible but now it's got this on and maybe it has some effects on it so that it looks like it's kind of thinking or something um, I think boil yeah so this is its computer stuff doing thinking things and uh, it's kind of going into overdrive uh, things like that in these specific points. So you can use these kind of techniques in different ways however you want to use them, um, but it all kind of blends really uh, nicely like that. Uh, just as a demo I'm going to have this blue and then when it gets to that point I'm going to have it transition into a different color. I'm going to make it go purple like that and if you look from this side it'll be clearer hopefully. Yep. Um, but instead of kind of snapping to it, because you you are now running full tilt like that, um, let's just have them a bit more different. Let's have it green or whatever the color that is. So at the moment, it will just suddenly be that other color. But what you could do is give it some power up time. And then it will take time to transition to that. So maybe you want it to, um, maybe there are, is like physical hair and you want that, that um, hair to be more springy as they're running. Um, but if you just suddenly make it springy, that might kind of mess up the uh, animation or something. So you could have this power up and power down. And then, um, so that suddenly turns off. So you could have power down. And then it's uh, nice and smooth. Logic in Dreams is very versatile, and complex things can be done simply when you know how. For example, detecting when the player double taps a button, or calculating how long a song is going to be, or figuring out what the current frame rate Logic is running at. You can also put gadgets together to create more complex effects, like setting a patrol route for one or many characters, or letting them give chase when they spot the player, and find their way back to the route if they lose the trail. These tutorials are available now at patreon.com slash tapdials for just $3 or your regional equivalent. Thanks for your support.